Hello, uh, welcome to CPT 373. Uh, today I'm going to go over the uh, PowerPoint of our HTML elements and then we are going to uh, go over what a wireframe is and we are going to wireframe our semester long project which will be a task manager. Um, I'm going to loosely follow the book, uh, not completely, but I'm going to take bits and pieces of it and uh, we are going to uh, build each week from the last previous week so we are doing things in chronological order and by the end of the semester we should have a fully uh, functional application where people are able to um, are able to put in their tasks and sync them with the web okay so the first thing I want to do is um, we are going to open up a um, I'm sorry hold on one second please okay so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to delete this delete. we are going to create a new folder on our desktop we're going to call it CPT 373 and we are going to go inside our um, folder and uh, if not if you don't have it already please download notepad plus plus and open up a new document and save it. Let's we're going to save it in uh, our CPT 373 folder. And as um, intro .html. Okay, so now we have our uh, first HTML document. Okay, so if you have that already and you are ready to go, let's. Uh, open up the PowerPoint HTML okay so HTML is and let's go to our slideshow uh, current slide okay so HTML is hypertext markup language um, it is a set of HTML tags it holds text images audio video uh, links to external JavaScript and uh, style sheets and our canvas element which is to uh, maybe create games or heavy animations that um, would require uh, drawing of some sort by math and uh, maybe we'll go over that at the end of the semester uh, HTML is uh, a definition of tags enclosed in opening and closing HTML tags or any tags uh, that we use uh, we open and close them how to open them is we open them by uh, declaring the tag uh, whether it's the HTML element or a div or uh, a list item which we're gonna go over and to close an HTML tag we uh, open the caret and then use a forward slash to denote say hey uh, we're going to close this HTML element and we close it uh, make sure you use a forward slash to close your HTML element or uh, when we do um, or when you do not use it, the uh, document thinks that you're just creating a new one. So right now the document would say, hey, you have two opening HTML tags but nothing closing. And we put this and it will say, okay, you are um, now closing your HTML tag and uh, you're good to go. So let's, okay, so we have, um, uh, save as, And we are going to save our document as an HTML document. No. Okay. So, um, that being said, let's jump right in to our HTML elements. First, we have the doc type tag. Uh, what this is, is declares our document as a uh, HTML document or HTML5 document and lets us use. Uh, things that are native to HTML5 such as audio tags and video tags. Uh, if we don't include this we will have a hard time rendering these tags um, and sometimes depending on the browser version or uh, the operating system version on the phone uh, it might not recognize some of these tags. So what we want to do is and every document we have is declare the doc type as HTML5. Okay and that's the last time we're gonna see it so uh, just so you know it says hey this is an HTML5 document and uh, that's the last time we see it. Then we have our HTML tags. Uh, 
Then we have our HTML tags, which says, hey, uh, all my HTML elements are going to go right inside these tags. Uh, again, not too important, but tags that you need to have and enclose the rest of our HTML do uh, document in. Then we have our head tags. So these are the second tags we are going to uh, use. And they go right underneath. Uh, by the way, everything is in chronological order, meaning that they need to go in this order. So we have our doc type, HTML, and then our head element. And this says, um, in our head element, we have our links to JavaScript. And we have our um, source equals and our wherever the JavaScript may be. Then the JS, yes. and then we close our script. Uh, and then we also have our um, our style sheets, which uh, give our element style. Okay, so our JavaScripts and external CSS sheets go right inside our head uh, head elements, our head tags. Okay, so just know that anything that we want to link from the outside world goes right inside the head tags, uh, just for semantic sake, and uh, it's a good way to organize uh, all our tags in this very head element. And then we have our body tag. So we are going to create our uh, open and, and closing body tags. And what our body is, is where all the juice of our application or website really is, uh, and, and it encloses all the rest of our tags. So you have a body, you have a liver, you have uh, organs. Uh, think of your body as our body and our organs as all the rest of the information that will be in a website or application. Uh, so anything that you want to appear in the document must go in between the body tags. Okay, so we have our body tags and they only appear once and that's the last time we ever hear from them. Uh, then we have our div. So what a div really is, is a uh, nickname for a division. Uh, it divides our information. Uh, so if we want to, for example, go back to our... Uh, What happened to our thing? Hold on one second and oh jeez, I will I lost all my information. Okay, so we have our head and I just had to write this real quick. Now let's write our body again. And save. And uh, we have our divs. So these are divisions, they're logical. Uh, division so we have a div and we close our div and we can have text and we can have text in between divs and what what they really are in essence is just um, holders they're nothing divs are nothing but boxes in the middle of space and let's open up our um, HTML document uh, they mean nothing they have no uh, size or position or color because we didn't give it any so what they are is, if you look at the console, just a way to divide our information. And I know that uh, this string is in this div, and this string is in another div. Um, so how do we uniquely identify uh, dividers or divisions or anything of that nature? We do it by, um, oh, that's why. Son of a gun, let me close one. Okay. We do it by giving them unique IDs. So I want to say hi. Uh, my first ID is my first div, and I have a div that says uh, that has an ID of my second div. So suppose uh, I treated these as um, students. Everyone in the class has your own unique ID. Um, we have our unique ID, so the registrar knows who to send the bill to uh, when we register for classes. If we didn't all have our unique IDs, uh, you would be getting other people's bills, and you wouldn't be too happy. Um, so the same, the same um, 
rules apply here. Every element needs to have their own unique ID uh, or it will cause problems in the HTML document. Um, they're unique identifiers and we are going to use them. So let's, um, for instance, let's create some style tags. And I don't usually do this, but I just want to demonstrate why we uniquely identify our elements. Um, to target a um, ID in CSS, we use a pound and we we um, target our my first div so we're going to copy and paste it next to um, our pound sign if I didn't have a pound sign it wouldn't be able to uh, it wouldn't be able to find anything in our document because uh, it wouldn't be able to target an ID so this says hey there's an ID of my first div and I want to give some styles and between our curly braces, we'll be able to apply some styles. Uh, I'll send you a link of the styles that we can use. Uh, we can set, we can apply background colors. Uh, height, width, and uh, any, a bunch of other styles. So, uh, we said hey I want my first div to have a background color of green uh, a height of 100 pixels and a width of 100 pixels let's save it and see what happens alright so we can see that my second div didn't get any style because we uh, targeted my first div meaning that only uh, anything with the ID of my first div was targeted so we should again only have uh, one element with one unique ID and one unique ID should only appear once uh, throughout the document Okay, so let's take my second div uh, Let's give it its own styles. Let's have a style my second div Background color of red height 50 picks with 50 picks Okay, and let's reload our document. So, so as you can see, uh, we give our elements unique IDs because we're gonna wanna give uh, different styles to every single one of them. Not every single one's gonna have the same style, so why uh, not give them unique IDs and we can target them separately. Uh, and we're going to use IDs later on uh, when we use JavaScript, okay? Uh, but suppose I have 10 divs and I want all of them to have the same uh, font color. Uh, should I apply a font color or color of white to every single div? Uh, you can, but it gets kind of annoying. So to, to counter that, uh, we are going to give it a class. So what a class is, is sort of like an ID and let's go to class okay classes are like IDs uh, they're used to target elements for CSS and JavaScript purposes their differences they're meant to be used on multiple uh, objects so we are going to have a dot class of my div and our period denotes that we are using um, a class instead of a pound which would denote, denote our IDs and we want a color of white and again this is a simple use where it really doesn't make sense or, or really uh, make a difference and I'll show you where it does okay so we have a class of my div and um, anything with the class of my div has a font color of white instantly throughout our document um, again, so this is a fast way of applying styles to like elements all at the same time. So say I have an application where I have a list view, and let me just pull it up. So say I have a, um, Okay, so say I have an application. Now I have a app where uh, I have thousands of list view items. Uh, should I get the ID of every single list item and style them separately? No, because I know that I want every single list item to have the same exact style and I want them to be white 
a uh, height of 100 pixels, to have mar two pixel margins everywhere. Uh, so I gave them the, all the list style of uh, bar list, and I applied the same styles to them. So if I want to target um, styles and not write thousands of lines in CSS where I have tons of uh, list items, I just give them a class and I apply one style to them. So to save time. Um, also, since we are using phones, we have limited amount of memory, uh, and we want to keep our code as efficient as possible. So to do that, uh, we find tricks or ways to uh, target elements at the same time in an efficient manner. Okay, so uh, now that we know what uh, classes and IDs are, again, if you have any questions about any of this, please feel free to um, email me. Okay, so the difference between classes and IDs are, uh, IDs are meant for one uh, use time use only, so this my first div, ID can never be used again in the document, and classes can be used anywhere where I have uh, like elements that need grouping of some sort, okay? Um, now let's go back to some of the other elements we're going to use throughout the semester, which is, let's see, let's go down, down. Okay, so now we have our ULs. ULs are just tags that say, hey, I'm going to put some list items uh, in, in us. Um, they're actually called unordered lists. Again, these tags mean nothing um, in a way. Uh, they're just meant to... Uh, bring some order or organization to your document because uh, say suppose I'm looking at your document and I see UL I know to expect list items within the UL tags um, they have no special meaning until I give them uh, colors sizes positions uh, or anything of that nature uh, so it's important to understand that it's important to understand that ULs or divs or uh, input uh, I'm sorry inputs actually do have a special meaning uh, spans the different tags that you could have and I will send you a list of those as well um, really mean nothing until you give them some sort of uh, definition or properties okay but just so when people are looking at it I know that you are going to have um, some sort of lists inside of UL so we're gonna have a UL uh, class of no padding and I'm gonna show you why in a second and we are automatically going to close our ULs because um, if we forget to close our UL, everything underneath this UL will think uh, the document will think is in the UL. So now we have our UL of no padding. What do we put in unordered list list items uh, to create a list item? Define a list item. Uh, li means list item, and that's something that actually has special meaning. So when uh, let's try something. My first list item and we are going to save and refresh HTML automatically gives list items uh, little dots as you would in PowerPoint this is a list item uh, we're gonna get rid of that because I do not like using uh, the little dots I think they're pointless uh, they're not used in uh, mobile applications maybe a website but I still don't think they're useful there either uh, they're more for PowerPoint presentations and, and Word documents. So we're going to have an uh, LI class of uh, my list. And we are going to declare my list in our CSS and give it some properties. To get rid of our little dots, we tell the CSS to say uh, list style none. This gets rid of our little dots. And now we could style our list however we want. Okay, and let's just real quick, no padding, let's go, no padding, and let's um, let's give our UL some styles. First, we want to get rid of our padding and margin. So if you open up uh, Microsoft Word, okay, and we go to page layout, you get to clear margins. Now, what margins do is it is the amount of space in between the edge of our document and the center of our document. So say we want one inch margins, uh, nothing will go into these last 0.5 inches in our document. Same thing with our HTML document. By default, our body, as you can see here, has eight pixels of margin. 
in our UL, and I, I believe it's 15 uh, pixels of margin. So we get rid of our margins so we could uh, hug uh, the edge of our document or the, the edge of the parent element that we are in. Uh, so margin zero and padding zero will get rid of those default styles and we are able to uh, style them on our own. Okay, uh, if you notice our list item still has a font color of white even though we only declared it in our div and before that our text was black. Um, cascading style sheets means cascading or to uh, flow downward which means that any uh, elements inside our parent class of my first div will inherit uh, the colors or background colors of the parent unless otherwise specified. So if I say, uh, tell CSS I want my color to be red, it will override um, the parent's uh, color of white because we defined it here in our uh, class but if we don't specify any color it won't go back to black it will be white as the parent is um, so something to remember just in case you uh, you know obviously you're going to have to nest elements within each other just something to remember that uh, every every child element will inherit its parents properties unless otherwise specified okay <coughs> excuse me um, okay so, uh, we have our list items. Okay, so let's add a couple more just for um, demonstration purposes. And we are going to a, um, use these in our uh, wireframe. Okay, so now as you can see, uh, we have our list items and they are uh, as you read, block level elements, uh, which you should have read from the PowerPoint, which uh, causes a line break. So every list item by default has a line break in between them uh, and they stack on top of each other. Why do we have list views? And list views are the most important or one of the most important um, attribute or tags that we are going to use because uh, the physical space in a phone is so small uh, we don't have room as we have in Google or uh, if we go to yahoo.com and we see that we have column one, column two, column three of information. Uh, and we can fit tons of information because I have a full 1080p screen. So I have, you know, uh, and a lot of physical 23 inch screen where I had tons of space and I can see tons of information. Uh, we don't have that in the phone. We have uh, 320 pixels. And let me just show you side by side. Not even this middle uh, column of information can fit. Really, only about the uh, this side is about the size of uh, information. So, so everything would have to really stack on top of each other. Uh, to do that, we have scrollable list views of information: Groupon, Yelp, uh, Open Table, things where you know you're locating uh, bars, clubs, restaurants, reviews, all that stuff. You're gonna have. Facebook when you're trying to find your friends you're gonna have uh, lists with stacked information on top of each other okay so just know that uh, you know this semester we'll be using list items uh, pretty heavily because uh, you only have one column of information at a time uh, things shouldn't really go side by side uh, they should just stack on top of each other and let me just go to a uh, page where I could show so if I click on uh, one of our uh, pages and let's go back okay and it will um, we have our you know list of information here and we have uh, things and they just stack on top of each other we go to oh, this does not have a menu uh, let's see this is a menu so when the menu comes up we have all our menu items uh, stacked right on top of each other okay and um, that would okay so now that we have our list items uh, let's go to our next thing which would be we have our URLs 
Okay, so now we have images. Uh, images are a little different from what we've seen so far. So let's clear out my second div for our image. Uh, to start image tag, we define our image as an image tag. So this actually is another uh, HTML tag that has special meaning. Uh, it's going to define an image. And uh, so far, we've seen properties like our class, our ID, um, and our CSS properties. Our images have its own special properties. It has image, and let's give it an ID of my first image. And it has a property of source. So what is a source? A source is uh, a link or a uh, image resource somewhere in the middle of space. So let me find one on my desktop. And if you have one, an image somewhere, uh, sitting around so I'm gonna bring uh, one of these let's copy it and paste and I am going to drag it in my CPT 373 folder and it's a JPEG uh, so it is a relative or a um, <clears throat> absolute path to our image so since I have uh, an image right in the same directory as my HTML document all I have to do is um, define our image name which is a true story dot jpg and this is our I'll make sure you close your double quotes and this is our first self closing tag uh, this is self closing because we put no information in it uh, it just has a source and it closes uh, we'll see a few other um, elements with the same self-closing property where you don't have to uh, have a separate tag that says you know for slash IMG because there's no information no text no other anything else goes in it okay so a uh, image is a self-closing tag so there's two kinds of tags uh, non self-closing tags and self-closing tags just to remember and let's refresh our document and our image will appear okay so that's how we link an image um, and then we could use CSS to give it a height a width so let's um, define my first image and let's give it a height of 50 pixels okay and we don't have to give it a width property what our HTML document does is it automatically scales the width. Uh, so say we have an image that's not a square. So that happened to be a square uh, image. But there are going to be images that are not. And let me find one that's not. Okay, I don't really know the dimensions of this image. So if I define a height of 50 pixels uh, and I don't define the width, HTML document automatically scales it correctly. Uh, if I say, hey, I want it to be 50 pixels and 100 pixels of width, uh, it's going to scale and it's not going to be great and I know it's not going to be the exact res uh, resolution that it should be and our, our image is going to look out of whack or uh, scaled so <clears throat> unless you know uh, your image is you know 100 pixels high and 200 pixels wide uh, you could just define the height and it will automatically scale the width for you okay so we could use CSS to uh, give it a height, a position uh, And okay, we can give it an opacity, uh, which makes it semi transparent. Uh, positioning, uh, any, there's tons of different properties. Again, I'll send them to you and we will go over them throughout the semester. Uh, so that's how we define an image. Uh, in our application, and when we use Eclipse, uh, you're going to see that our index is in the main directory and we have an image folder. So an image folder is uh, a folder that is just there for images it is there for so we don't have a hundred different types of documents uh, in the same folder and it's a good way to organize so let's create an image uh, folder at, in our directory in our CPT 373 folder and let me just rename that image and let's put our image in that image folder and if we refresh we're gonna see that it's now missing why? Because it is no longer in our uh, the same directory as our HTML document, and we need to uh, find our image folder first. 
And now we are in our image folder, and within that image folder we have uh, a true story.jpg, and it will relink our image. And let's bring our opacity back. Okay, so that is how we link images. Um, pretty straightforward. We can also link images from the web. So if we go to, uh, let me get an image. Okay, so let's take this image and let me find one. And Okay, there we go. And where are you? Hold on one. There we go. So we have http.seeger.com slash app slash image uh, slash sort list.png. We can simply put it in our source and our HTML dot and our HTML document can um, link to any image online. So say we have a social network where we have all our images on a um, on a server. We could link to uh, images on the server and our HTML document will load them. And let's refresh. And we cannot find it. And hold on one second. Okay, and one second. Okay, and it just, I'm sorry, it just took a second to load. And now, as you can see, your our image appears from the web uh, as, you know what, I'm going to switch to Chrome because I do not like Firefox. Uh, and let's just open this with Chrome. Oops. There we go. Okay, so now we're in Chrome and we can see our image uh, that has been linked from http.seeker.com slash image slash sortlist.png. Uh, we're going to be using a great deal of images throughout the semester. Uh, as you can see, I have them in my list views. I have them as my accents. I have them uh, in my sidebar. Uh, we're going to be using list views everywhere. They're a very important part of applications because without them, our apps will look completely uh, and utterly dull. Uh, I have them for my uh, rating stars, my rating stars here. Uh, images are an integral part of making a beautiful looking um, application. Okay? Uh, okay, so now that we have our images, let's go to our next element, which would be inputs uh, without user input uh, we'll pretty much have a boring application uh, my form of input is users can uh, swipe stars and submit ratings um, traditionally you need to be able to uh, log in and log out of those applications uh, a user should have the ability at all times to um, oh, why the heck are you, hold on Okay, so let's refresh and I just logged out of my application and we bring up our input. So I want to be able to uh, tell the user to give me their email and password to log in or if they're not yet a part of uh, the app, they need to put in their first name, their last name, their email, their nickname, their password and confirm password. Okay, uh, there's different types of inputs. We have our text. So I want to be able to tell the user, hey, uh, just put in a plain text name. Okay, and it would look something like this. Uh, inputs have uh, another attribute, uh, which is the type attribute or property. Uh, as, so right now we have our class, our ID, our source, uh, and our type. and uh, inputs are another special meaning tag that are only used uh, for user input. So we have input 
and we have our type property, which is um, text for this instance. Uh, ID name, we can have an ID class, my input. And it has an awesome property called placeholder. So that is our uh, other property unique to our inputs, which is name. Okay, and what is a placeholder? Uh, just like in this application, I have a uh, first name, last name. Notice I didn't put them next to each other uh, like I did in the slide to show what a input looks like on a website. Uh, having them side by side doesn't work. Like I said before, you should only have one column of information. To save space, uh, you can use the placeholder attribute or property to uh, tell the user what you want them to put in uh, right inside our inputs and keep our app screens clean because they are physically small. We don't have the size of a website. Uh, website. So to counter that, we uh, put placeholders inside of our uh, inputs, okay? So we have our inputs, and now let's refresh our uh, HTML document, and you'll see that you have uh, the input type of name. And by the way, you should be using Chrome uh, because it's an HTML5 browser. Or if you have Mac Safari, is obviously fine. Uh, okay, so we have our input type equals text, ID, uh, and placeholder. Uh, another type of input would be the password input. Input type equals password. ID. My password. Class. My input. Placeholder. Password. Okay, and let's close our input. Uh, now, what is the difference between these two? Just the name of the type. Uh, when we refresh, we're going to see that there really is no absolute difference except uh, except that all our input shows up as periods. Okay, instead of it being uh, text. So say that you have a uh, an app where you want someone to type in their password when they want to log in. Uh, obviously, you don't want the person behind them to see what they're typing as their password so they can hack their account. Um, so to counter this, we create an input type of password uh, so no one can see what is being typed into that field. Okay, so we would use that uh, when we want to create a password field. And um, our next input type is called tell. Uh, this is the next few are actually specific for phones. Uh, input type equals tell is a phone specific input type. Uh, you won't notice a difference unless uh, you are on a phone. Um, we use it when we want the user to strictly put in just numbers. Uh, as you can see here, we have uh, instead of, of a um, normal keypad where there's text, or I'm, I'm sorry, letters, um, we want there we go. We want uh, a number of keypads to come up. So I have telephone numbers, zip codes, social security numbers. Uh, we want the user to have a user friendly experience uh, as easy as possible. So to do this, we use um, you know things that make our users have an easy time. Uh, I don't need them to have letters in uh, my phone number field. To do that, I specifically have them pull up um, a number of keypads. Okay, we won't see the difference on um, on a website uh, because we uh, don't have soft keyboards and the user has access to a keyboard anyway. Uh, but we're gonna put it in. And if you have a phone, go on. Um, and I will make a uh, hold on one second. Um, we will experience this more when we create our app in uh, Eclipse and. Uh, we pull it up on our emulators. Okay, so let uh, let's make an input of tell input type equals tell id telephone number class my input.
and let's close our input. And uh, when we refresh our document, it makes zero difference now. Uh, but if you were on a phone, you would see the difference where you would have uh, the tell keypad come up. Okay, so we have our email uh, type. It is actually the same keyboard, uh, except you'll see the at symbol uh, and uh, the dot symbol. So you could type in uh, yada yada at njit.edu. Uh, again, this is just for enhancing the user experience. Okay. And like I said before, uh, we use placeholders just so uh, it enhances the user experience. Okay, and let's go to our next um, attribute, or I'm, I'm sorry, element is uh, our text area. Okay, so suppose I have an app like um, like Yelp, where I had to put in user reviews of a place. Uh, instead of using input, where and let me get to it, it's one line of information, uh, and my input's going to infinitely scroll, so I could keep putting information. Uh, but I don't get to see what's behind all the way in the beginning. Uh, we don't want that. We want the user to be able to type in a paragraph and like a text message, see everything they've written so far. Um, to do that, we have something called a text area. And the text area uh, enables multi-line. It breaks and it creates a new line. Uh, a text area is another form of an input, but it actually is its own tag. And let's type it in, text area. ID equals uh, notes. Play, it has the placeholder property notes class uh, my text my text area. And this is actually not a self closing tag. Even though we don't put anything inside of it, it's still not self closing. Uh, if you don't close it, anything underneath it will think uh, will actually appear. So actually, let's just save and let's refresh. And you're gonna see we have our multi-line uh, text area. So let's not close our tag. Let's see what happens. Save. And now any tag that was underneath it is actually now inside of our text area because we did not close, uh, which is our div body in HTML is now inside of our text area because we did not close it. So it's imperative that you close all your tags. Otherwise, uh, something like that will happen very easily. Okay. And now it's gone. So our text area allows uh, for multi-line um, areas of text. And by default, there's this little handle that lets you resize it. Uh, and we're gonna go, when we go through CSS, it's very easy to get rid of. Uh, so we can create a nice uh, effect with the rest of our inputs to make them look the same. Actually, let's just do it real quick. Uh, our ID is notes. <coughs> notes and resize none. And that disables our the resize tab on the corner. Okay, so it's just one size. Okay, so now uh, I'm sure you read this, but we let's go over again. Uh, we have three types of elements, inline elements, block elements, and inline blocks. And let's go to this website. And I'm going to just go over what they are. Actually, I'm going to keep this up just to compare. And... Oh. Okay. So... There's... Three types of elements. One is a block. Okay, so what is a block? A block is a div. A block is a list item. Any uh, element that causes a line break. So our green div, by default, without even uh, giving it any sort of position, breaks line, and our second div is already on the second line of its own. 
Uh, same thing, and it brings everything else on a second line. List items are block level elements. I have my first list item, and underneath it, my second list item automatically causes a line break. Okay? Uh, what are inline blocks? Inline blocks are block elements that have their own space. So I could give them a width, a height, um, and a padding, but block, but elements will uh, appear on the same line. So if I tell my uh, two divs to display as inline block, and we refresh our document, it will still have um, be able to have a height, a width, but they will appear next to each other. But they're still blocks, so they still have their own space per se. Okay, uh, this is good when you want to have a bunch of list items in a horizontal uh, scroll list. So you would have your list items as display in line block, and uh, they'll still have their they can have their own height, width, and still be on the same line. Uh, now, what is an inline element? Because I just described something that's on the same line. Inline elements can't have a height or a width. So if I say uh, display inline, what it does, it wraps content, meaning uh, I can't tell this red div uh, that was 50 pixels to be any bigger than anything that was inside of it. So if I have uh, for instance, uh, our inputs. If I have uh, text inside our div, it will wrap to this content. Uh, it won't get bigger unless I put block level elements or any other sort of elements um, inside of it and it will expand, but I can't tell an inline element to be 400 pixels high. I could only tell it to uh, be inline and it'll display next to other elements uh, unless otherwise unless otherwise specified okay so we're gonna go over that what I use inline elements for is um, if I have a paragraph and I want to make some let me get rid of this and I'll show you okay so if I have and let me get rid of these if I have um, a paragraph and I'm going to just span class so if I have a span with a class of green and I type in dot green color green since our inline element oh and let's just make it a different color Since these are not block level elements and will not cause a line break with the rest of the elements, they have no height or width or no padding, no, no margin, uh, I use them to highlight things like say I want to have uh, a couple words in my document that have a different color, I wrap them around the span uh, and that's what I use spans for and I use inline elements for spans uh, are the most popular of inline elements uh, and we'll be going over that throughout the entire semester because uh, actually they're a pretty important concept to know okay uh, so that's that's pretty much it for the PowerPoint so let's uh, go over what we're gonna do for the semester we're gonna make a um, a notes or a task manager uh, application where we can uh, save save items in our local database uh, we're gonna sync with the web and we are going to share our task with other people uh, in the class um, so we are going to make a wireframe. What a wireframe is, is simply putting all the HTML elements uh, in the HTML document that we're going to use in our, uh, in our application without any sort of style. So it should, in essence, look like this. And we can delete all our styles. And it will look like a bunch of tags. Uh, well, you won't see the tags, you'll just see any HTML elements that we are going to use uh, throughout, the throughout the entire application. So 
that being said, let's delete everything in our application or in our uh, document that we have so far. Okay. Uh, the first thing I want to do is create our doc type and say, hey, we have a doc type of HTML5. Good. And we'll never see it again. And as I said before, we are going to wrap all our elements in our uh, HTML tags. So let's give us some room. Let's create our head. And we're not going to put anything in here for now, but we're going to. So let's just put the tags in. Uh, from when we do and let's create our body okay so now we have a nice exoskeleton and we should have a blank uh, slate and we are going to put our elements in so we have our HTML our head our body and uh, they're neatly wrapped again these are in chronological order so the head has to go before the body in the, in the um, document Okay. Okay. So, uh, that being said, and let's make a space here. Space here. Uh, divs are one of the most important elements because we are going to use that for screen separation. Uh, in this application, I first made it on a browser and then I transported it to uh, Xcode for iPhone and then uh, Eclipse for Android. Um, okay, so I have a screen here. Uh, in a traditional HTML page, I have uh, links. So you click a link and it brings you to a different URL. Uh, on an application, uh, they're called SPAs, single page applications, meaning I never leave seeker.com slash app. I click something, it brings me to a different screen, but the link hasn't changed. What I'm doing is using JavaScript to logically take me to a different screen of information where I have uh, divs with other information inside of them uh, and I will uh, hide them and take them off screen etc using transitions and animations so the first thing we're gonna do is create our screen structure we have to know uh, what information we are going to have we are going to have a main page uh, we are going to have a page where we could um, put in tasks we are going to have a page where we can see tasks uh, so we are going to have a three logical page application. So we are divs are going to be the basis of our um, page structure. We could use divs in other places, but for now let's make them our uh, pages. And we are going to use IDs to um, bring some meaning to our divs. Uh, so meaning when you create an ID for a div or a uh, list item, make sure they make sense. So I'm going to. Uh, have div ID equals uh, main page okay so I wouldn't have a div ID of uh, I wouldn't have a div ID of Mexico because that doesn't make sense to our application uh, it has to make sense for what we're doing I know that this is going to be the main page of our application where it says welcome and to log in and whatever to see your um, tasks so I know this is going to be the main page of our application okay so that is pretty much it and then we are going to have our second screen div ID equals um, add task so now I know that this div is going to hold all the information uh, necessary for making um, our our task page okay so now we have our two screens or two logical screens and let's have our third screen of div id equals view tasks. Again, so in this application I have div id list view, div id bar page, div id menu, uh, div id login stuff. Uh, and I have divs within the div uh, that I could transition in in between. Uh, I have my, this does not have a gallery, but I have, uh, let me go to a page that does have a gallery. And I have my uh, div ID gallery where it is being a pain. And I could see my uh, images of a place via the gallery, okay? so. 
Uh, we use divs for logical separations and screens instead of physical page transitions. Uh, you stay on the same page and you just use JavaScript uh, and CSS to transition uh, through pages in the application, which is a really cool concept. Uh, it, and it gets tricky because obviously we're working with phones that don't have so much memory. So if we don't know how to clear our information in and out, uh, we're going to run out of memory pretty quickly. Uh, the good thing is that just as you saw there, uh, and it didn't happen again, uh, as you can see, and I'm going to try to bring up, this has to load. So it's loading a new page every time it's loading all the scripts. Once this page loads, these don't have to load, so everything loads lightning fast. Um, it's not loading a new page, it's just bringing up the, the page that everybody has loaded once the application is started, which is great. Again, because we have a phone that's kind of slow, so if we had to bring up a new page on every phone, uh, it would take you know a second or two, and it would look like a native application. And that's what we're going for. We want to get the absolute most native experience possible. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, now that we have our um, s logical screens and again remember this because that will be on um, some sort of test okay so now we have our screens now we want to put our elements that go inside of each screen uh, we have our main page so we're going to have a logo so let's uh, add our div id equals logo and we're going to use css to uh, make have a background image uh, as an image instead of an image tag with an image source and we'll go over that later so we have our uh, logo and we are going to have uh, our unloader list with a class of no padding and we're going to use the same class throughout the entire application so uh, and we'll go over this again so we have our unordered list of no padding and we're going to have a list item, li class uh, buttons. Uh, and inside of our list item, and we're going to put in some buttons. So we're going to use divs uh, and we're going to style them to look like buttons. So div id equals login button. and login as our text and div. So let's save and refresh our page and you'll see that that's what we have so far. With all the tags we just have our uh, default list style and our login text and let's just copy because uh, we're going to use mostly the same uh, rules and we're going to have li class of buttons again div id equals sign up button and it's going to uh, read sign up instead. So again, we're not doing much. Uh, we're just creating some HTML tag structure and until we use CSS to give it any sort of meaning, it really is nothing uh, until we give them some rules. And I say, you know, I'm gonna have buttons here. These are, this is actually nothing but a div uh, that reads login and I give it styles to make it look like a button. Uh, and it will have no style until I give it meaning. So I can make any element look like anything I want uh, pretty much with the use of CSS, which is great. Okay, so I have my uh, login screen and our logo uh, and that is all we're gonna have for the time being. We're gonna go back uh, and we are going to uh, come back to that later. So we're just gonna build a pretty much basic structure for now and we are going to come back and we are going to add some more elements as we go along and as we uh, use CSS to um, style our applications, okay? So now we have our first screen pretty much minus our uh, login stuff and make sure you indent correctly so I could read uh, your, um, your code easier, okay? And uh, since these are the same level, so div ID logo and UL class no padding, uh, they have the same uh, level of inheritance. They're first children of div ID main page. Uh, they're on the same level and these are second children which have their second level of indentation. Uh, so if you look at my code, you can read it quite easily. Okay, so we have our add task. 
um, what do we want for our add task is we are going to uh, have a screen where we could input our tests. Uh, we're going to give it a title, we're going to give it a, a reminder date, and we're going to give it a notes date, okay? So we want to have uh, some inputs and the text area. First, let's add a div, uh, or actually we could get away with just using a uh, unordered list, ul id tasks ul and let's indent and we are going to have our and let's let's actually close it right away okay so now we have our list items which are second children I like class task list and I'm going to maybe apply some other styles to uh, this list compared to our ally list, list of buttons, so I'm going to give it a different class uh, for grouping purposes. Uh, so let's insert our input type equals text, id equals uh, task name, class task input and placeholder task title and it's a self closing tag and make sure that you close your uh, li okay so we're going to give it the same properties that we've been given uh, as we gave it before we have an input of a, we have the type attribute, we have the ID attribute, we have our class attribute, we have our placeholder attribute, and that is our list item. So we make sure we close everything and let's save and refresh. <coughs> and as you can see, it has our default list item and our placeholder, and it's an input type of text. Okay? Uh, we have now we are going to have a reminder date li class of task list because it is going to be um, the same class, the same grouping. And we are going to have an input type of tag and an ID of reminder date class task input placeholder task title and li okay so again all it does is lo uh, logically groups our uh, list items and right now they're gonna make no difference because obviously uh, I have no styles or anything but eventually we're only gonna see one screen at a time so we'll see our login screen before uh, this screen and this screen will be hidden until we use JavaScript to transition between the two pages and after that we are going to uh, use our uh, text areas to uh, apply some notes and we have our input type equals text ID equals uh, oh you know what I'm sorry text area area ID equals um, notes class long text area and placeholder notes and this is not a self closing tag so we have to close it and we have to close our list item and we already have our uh, ul is closed and uh, let's save and refresh okay um, and because it's bigger so it appears to be underneath the thing the the list item bullet okay so now we have our uh, oh and then we are going to uh, have a uh, a submit button li class equals task list and uh, div id equals 
submit task class submit button um, and we are going to have the text of submit close the div and close our list item okay so this may not make sense right now but we're going to uh, next week really apply these uh, styles and we will uh, make sense of it very quickly uh, so now we have our uh, div and again it means nothing right now because it has zero styles to it so it'll look like a bunch of words sitting in an HTML document okay uh, but actually but in reality we have uh, two entire screens of an, H an HTML5 mobile application okay so now uh, we have our oh, and we're gonna we're, again we're gonna add stuff so this is just uh, some basic stuff just to show what exactly uh, pages are th that they're logical pages we're gonna go back and while we are uh, styling um, the second time because we're going to do basic styles basic CSS styles and then we're going to do uh, Android based CSS styles uh, we're going to uh, add our uh, some of our navigation bars and our navigation buttons and uh, some of our other forms uh, but for now we're just going to put in our very basic elements and then go back to them uh, in a couple of weeks or next week okay so let's do our, our final page uh, again so the cool thing about uh, JavaScript and CSS and HTML and mobile applications in general uh, we are going to uh, be able to um, dynamically create elements uh, so when I load this page I didn't hand type all these thousands of uh, list items I pulled them from a database and used JavaScript to uh, template these list items <coughs> and um, so they all come from a database and they're dynamically created so our view tasks are going to be created from our database either locally or from the web uh, and right now all we have to do is have our div uh, and we don't have to put anything uh, in our div so right now we should have two uh, screens uh, next week we will come back and talk a little bit more about dynamically created elements uh, and we will discuss what CSS is and CSS our application so this is our wireframe uh, of an application so any application that I make uh, this started out as just a bunch of HTML tags that were, uh, you know, put together. Uh, and I will bring them up. Okay, so these are all the um, HTML tags that I set and I uh, put in my document, and then I made them into screens and different elements on the screen and these are dynamically created obviously as you see that there's a lot of them um, and I'll bring that back and I have um, uh, my static tags and I put uh, different information in each one of them so that's how my application start out as just text and then we apply CSS uh, to make them look like you know objects buttons lists uh, informations of er different uh, areas of information uh, you know most of these have and let's go back uh, let's see and uh, I use this for video and we have images and I use this as uh, links for a telephone number etc etc so uh, again when you first uh, create an application you will first have a uh, a wireframe and then you go from there okay so next week we will go over uh, CSS uh, what it really is what it does uh, in depth and we will um, CSS our wireframe to make our application thank you